How do you fancy going on a fantastic Scottish historic road trip? We'll travel through beautiful countryside, quaint villages, we'll see peaceful beaches, we'll visit a prehistoric monument, an ancient monastery and lots more. Along the way, we're going to meet Scotland's most famous queen and America's most famous sailor. So, if you're interested in the people, places and events in Scottish history, then click the subscribe button at the bottom right of the screen and ring the notification bell to make sure you find out when I upload new videos. In the meantime, I've finished breakfast, let me take you on a journey. We are heading out on a fantastic journey, but it starts off with questions, questions, questions. Bruce, why are we going this way? We, we could go to Three of Cups. I know, right, we could go to Carlaverock, there's loads of places that we could go, but what I wanted to do today was to take a route through Dumfries and Galloway and go to different types of places, like from prehistoric through to medieval all the way to 18th century and show people the beauty of Dumfries and Galloway as we go with a whole variety of different stuff so that they can come and visit themselves at some point in the future. That's the plan. You'll enjoy it. It'll be good. All right. All right. Look at this. I believe you. I yeah. believe you. I wanted to start with a couple of places that were home to the Scottish father of the American Navy. John Paul Jones was the Scottish father of the American Navy. Now, I'm not going to go over his whole story here. I've made a video about it and I'll give you a link in a minute. But I did want to bring you here to his playground as he grew up. This is Carristhorn, where he first helped fix boats and give thought to the sea by this tidal firth. No doubt, he watched the ocean come and go, maybe wondering where it would take him later in life. You can walk along the beach, as he would have done, and cast your mind back to when this now quiet hamlet was a thriving little port. I say quiet little hamlet, it does get busier at lunchtime here at the Steamboat Inn. In fact, I've got fond memories of sitting here on a sunny day enjoying a meal and a pint of Guinness with one of my Patreon members that lives nearby. Patreon membership's a way to help support the channel. It helps pay for the chatty man that sits next to me on the drive and makes the images look pretty when we stop. The channel couldn't survive on advertising revenue alone, so if you can help, there's a link for Patreon membership top right. Come and join us. The point is that this is a lovely spot to sit, have a drink, lunch, chat, and sometimes sunshine. But we're heading three miles up the road to the John Paul Jones Birthplace Museum. Come with. Now, on the day that we visited, the museum opened at 10.30am, so check the timings for everything that I mentioned today. This is a great location. You have a beach on one side and our Brigland Gardens on the other, as well as an overnight spot for camper vans. Of course, the reason that we're here is to celebrate the Scottish father of the American Navy. The museum itself has lots of lovely little artefacts and tells the story of this pirate patriot. Having heard his tale, you'll come out the other side inspired to get a deeper understanding of how this incredible transatlantic sailor lived his life. Enter the cottage in which he grew up and you're transported back in time. I love places like this, where you can get a feel for exactly what life would have been like for the people who made history. People born in ordinary circumstances can achieve extraordinary things. Now, it's true achievements were at sea, but this is genuinely like going back in time. You boy, get on with it, uh, hoist the mainsail, rig the jib, shiver me timbers, yes. The king, the constitution. You 
You can only be a Patriot pirate for a moment, because there's more to come yet. As it is, John Paul Jones left the country under a bit of a cloud. But you can find out the details of that in the full video that I made about John Paul Jones by clicking the link top right. Hey, Matt, that's us finished that bit. Are you coming? John Paul Jones did leave Scotland under a bit of a cloud. But he wasn't the only person to leave Scotland under a cloud. 45 minutes down the road, and 200 years earlier, we'll find out about somebody else who left under an even bigger cloud. First, a short detour off the main road takes you to Orchardon Tower, an idyllic setting where you can get a wee peek at medieval life, a unique and charming circular tower from the mid-1400s. Now, you're probably thinking that, that tower would have looked great with some drone shots. I thought so too. And if Matt hadn't crashed the drone into a tree... Just use your imagination. This is Dundrennan Abbey. Like many of our ancient abbeys, it's now a majestical ruin. But what a history. Like so many abbeys in Scotland, this was first built by David I. But Galloway wasn't actually part of Scotland at the time. This was a period when Hebridean Vikings had produced the Gaul Gale. Gaul being Gallic for strangers. Long blonde hair, horned hats, rapey pillagey robber types. I know some of that's caricature. I'm just trying to lighten the mood. So Dundrennan has seen the transition of Galloway becoming part of Scotland. It's been a monastic centre of trade and agricultural development. This close to the border, it's been damaged during the wars of independence and of course, at the Reformation. Of course, the most famous visitor to the Abbey was Mary, Queen of Scots. After she'd fled south from the fateful Battle of Langside, she spent the night here with the monks. And it was from their pier nearby that she waved goodbye to Scotland on the 16th of May, 1568. She thought she'd be coming back in a few months with an army supplied by her cousin Elizabeth. The past is preserved in what's left of these walls. And when we visited, there was protective fencing as Historic Scotland tried to assess how best to preserve the remains for the future. By the time that you're here, more will be accessible. But a lot of what's really interesting is in the stone store, where remnants of the stoneworks are kept in safety. It's worth a visit, if for no other reason than to consider the mystery of the unknown abbot. The effigy that would have lain above his stone coffin shows him robed with crozier in hand, but with a dagger in his chest as he grasps it. At the feet of the assassinated abbot is a assailant who has in turn been critically wounded in punishment for his mischievous murderous activities. The Abbey spanned 400 years of activity as the ups and downs and religious roller coaster ran through this idyllic setting. Time for some refreshments. Carcubre. So there you go, Matty. Carcubre, an artist town apparently. Oh, and it's very pretty. Very oh, pretty. Is the, the thing is, though, I thought we would have seen a centipede. Uh, what? The, the wee Kirkubri centipede, do you know? What are you on about? Oh, see you southerners, you know nothing about Scottish culture. There was a centipede, there was a dancing centipede, very famous here, in Kirkubri. She was, aye, they wrote songs about her, not. The wee Kirkubri centipede was, I can't remember how, the, how it goes. Are you drunk? Do I need Lex to drive? number 43, <laughs> we're travelling up the side. I can't <laughs> Yeah, and she used to have, she used to go for me. She used to go up to Loch Ness and have lunch with the monster. Yeah, the weaker Kubri centipede. Right, I'll need to put a 
a, a link for um, people to hear the wee Kirkcubri centipede song. I'll, I'll check it out. That's myself. what Kirkcubri's uh, famous for. Uh -huh. <laughs> Alright, so forget about the Kirkcubri centipede. Just shut up and tell us about your show. Yes, well, we're on our way to a prehistoric monument, the kind of thing you'd get in Orkney. And I'll be doing my show, Stories of Scotland, in Kirkwall in the Pickaquoy on the 23rd of September. So, I'll leave a link at the top right for you to click and go to that. In fact, down in the description below, there's going to be a link to my website with all tour dates, information and tickets, so people can find out wherever I'm going. Uh, but Pickaquoy, 23rd of September. And no more singing? No more singing. You won't be spending part of your day trying to work out how to get a fat man up a tree to retrieve footage from a crashed drone. So you might continue round the southern coast to Whithorn Priory and St Ninian's Cave. You might turn north up to Glen Trull in the beautiful spot where Robert Bruce's fortunes changed. But we are going to make our last stop at the most ancient location in this road trip. This is Cairn Holly. It's a truly amazing place. Sometimes, as I tell stories from Scotland's history, people looking through today's prism will argue in the comment section as to whether this guy was British because it was post 1707, or that guy was Scottish because his granddad was Norman, or this or that, or nuance of nonsense to justify politics, pontification, or pedantry. And then you come to places like this. Thousands of years ago, people gathered here to bid farewell to those that they loved and respected, without ever a thought for what Scotland or Britain would ever be. They had more important things in their mind, connecting with their people, their ancestors, their gods and nature. And they left us this, to remember them. Maybe they wondered how they would be remembered. They knew this place, but could never have imagined this time. Each generation opens a door into the next. They walk their path, and the next door opens, and the next. Little by little, tools of stone and bone become metal. Hunting becomes farming, becomes industry, engineering becomes huge, and then tiny, till all that matters are ones and zeros. Hard graft becomes software. Whenever I visit these places, I always find myself wondering what was in the minds of the people who built them, and what they'd think of the idea that what they built here could be captured in an image and shown to them, or sent to the skies, then shown to somebody else on the other side of a world that they may never even have imagined as round. Our ancestors, who first laid theirs to rest in these chambered cairns, could never have imagined us. Maybe we could never truly understand them. But across the millennia, we could both look up to a view that warms the heart and say, this is home. You can support the channel with a thumbs up, a click top right to become a Patreon member or a click of the link below to buy me a coffee. There's another road trip video coming up on screen now. I mean, doch is going to be la my life. Cheerio and